So for this video, we're going to be looking at three provocation or special tests that are used in the assessment and diagnosis of glenohumeral instability. So let's go ahead and begin. The first test replicates some of our active and passive range of motion assessment, that being external rotation of the glenohumeral joint. The difference is, is our intention. And so oftentimes this test can be incorporated into your range of motion assessment rather than waiting until your special test. In order to apply and test with apprehension and relocation, you're gonna bring the individual into approximately 80 to 90 degrees of shoulder abduction. I oftentimes will use my thigh to support the arm such that I can use my other hand in a moment here. So we're gonna take the individual then into end range external rotation. We're either looking for apprehension or a request from the patient to stop the motion. If that occurs, we're then going to apply an anterior to posterior force through the glenohumeral joint to relocate. And then we're going to ask the patient, does that feel better, worse, or no different? If they indicate it feels better, that's considered positive because what's happening as we move into this externally rotated position is the head of the humerus is gliding more anterior and when we relocate it with that anterior to posterior force, we're providing an improved congruency between the two articulating surfaces. So again, instability first, followed by relocation to confirm the test for instability. The second two tests are performed with the patient in a seated position. So we're gonna ask for a patient to sit up and allow their arm to come by the side. Now the first test is what's known as a load and shift test and in essence it breaks the humerus and glenoid into four quadrants. What you would do is using kind of a lumbrical grip you would find both the anterior and posterior portions of the humerus. You would imagine or, or kind of superimpose those four quadrants onto uh, the surface here and you're going to load, meaning load into the joint, and then anteriorly or posteriorly glide. And you're specifically looking for a, a percentage of, of movement into either the posterior or the anterior uh, capsule. With this recognized posterior, you're just dealing with some rotator cuff tendons that are pretty broad, the anterior is where we find our bicipital groove and the long head of the biceps. Your thumb right over that portion can be quite irritating and uncomfortable, so be careful while executing that test. Finally, the third test is the sulcus sign. The sulcus sign is perhaps the easiest to perform as all you're doing is providing a long axis distraction. You're gonna stabilize such that the individual does not tilt through the trunk while performing this test. So stabilize here. You're gonna come just above the elbow and you're gonna pull straight down. The appearance of a sulcus, which we can kind of see here a little bit, here's the chromia, we're gonna pull down, would indicate slight, in this case, instability or laxity. Laxity and instability are not interchangeable. Laxity would mean that there's some hypermobility. Instability would mean that symptoms are being produced or are being reported. And so in this case, this is a healthy shoulder without symptoms. As we perform this sulcus sign test, you can see the sulcus appear right there. That would be a positive, but a positive for laxity, not for instability. So have a go with these three tests apprehension and relocation, our load and shift, and then finally sulcus sign. Let me know if there's any questions.